Welcome to Too Good to Be True, an investigative podcast about exposing the scams, schemes, and financial cults trying to separate you from your money. Hello, and welcome back to Too Good to Be True. I am your co-host, Ryan Hulan, a journalist and drag artist in New York City. And I am Julia Lorenz Olson. I create and co-write Two Cents with PBS, and I'm an accredited financial counselor. So guess what we're here to talk about today? What, what, what? I'm so ready. Supplements, vitamins, and essential oils. Oh my gosh. We're going to find out just how essential any of these oils really are. Or honestly, how essential any of this stuff is. We should probably note that we're going to be leaning particularly hard on the interviews we did for this and primary sources, because let's be clear right now, we are not medical doctors. This is not medical advice. This is us investigating a topic and then talking about it. Yeah, right. We're just kind of looking at the landscape of what the research looks like from like a 10,000 foot view. Yes. The the point of this episode is that you should be suspicious of any influencer or media (laughs) trying to tell you something. Speaking of, before we get into all the scams and the snake oil and the overpromising in this space, let's first talk a little bit about what vitamins and minerals actually are and how our bodies really need them. So, for these terms we need to find, we turn to NIH.gov. Quote, vitamins and minerals are essential substances that our bodies need to develop and function normally. The known vitamins include A, the B vitamins, C, D, E, and K. There's also biotin and folate, folic acid. A number of minerals are essential for health. Calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, iron, zinc, iodine, sulfur, cobalt, copper, fluoride, manganese, and selenium. Multivitamins, multiminerals, are the most frequently used dietary supplements, with close to half of American adults taking them. Multivitamins cannot take the place of eating a variety of foods that are important to a healthy diet. Foods provide more than vitamins and minerals. Many foods have fiber and other substances that can provide healthy benefits. However, some people who don't get enough vitamins and minerals from food alone or have certain medical conditions might benefit from taking one or more of these nutrients found in single nutrient supplements or in multivitamins. However, evidence to support their use for overall health or disease prevention in the general population remains limited. In addition to vitamins, dietary supplements can contain minerals, herbs, or other botanicals, amino acids, enzymes, and many other ingredients. Dietary supplements come in a variety of forms, including tablets, capsules, gummies, and powders, as well as drinks and energy bars. Popular supplements include vitamin D and B12. Minerals like calcium and iron, herbs such as echinacea and garlic, glucosamine, probiotics, and fish oils, unquote. So that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of varieties of things that they can stick in a pill. But there's a lot of people with a lot of health concerns. So it's not surprising that lots of claims have been made about lots of substances and they're all still in the mix. A lot of these people truly are religious about these substances. You know, if taking Mm. a B vitamin makes you believe you have more energy, even though you don't have a deficiency, you're going to take that as confirmation over and above anything that you might read or someone might tell you. And it's the same thing with aromatherapy. If lavender makes you feel calm, that's nice. But it doesn't mean that it's like clinically studied approved effect for everyone. Yes. So in the spirit of financial confessions. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. So this happened to me, what you just described. So I, a while back, I started taking fish oil. After a friend who's like a facialist, she was like, hey, if you're having trouble with blackheads, like if you take this oil, it can kind of help the, I don't know, the sebum, the oils in your face become like less cloggy. Sounds kind of right. And I was like, "Uh, sure. okay, Right. And so I start taking them. And for some reason over that time, I... I mean, I deal with anxiety a lot, but in that time, my anxiety was like out of control. And I start taking these supplements and over the next couple of weeks, I'm like, I feel really emotionally regulated. That's so weird. What's going on? And I I changed nothing about what I was doing. And I just happened to look on this fish oil thing. And one of the like little check boxes of what it does is like improves mood. So I was like, oh. Here we go. My answer. 
to why I, and I still take them. <laughs> I do Dang. because like that line of thinking where if you see any sort of improvement, it's a sign for your brain to like latch on and be like, hey, I can control this thing that makes me feel out of control, like maybe my weight or my anxiety, right? We just want to feel in control ultimately. Yes, yes. That is the emotional trigger that this particular scam has been so successful at exploiting. There's also adaptogens. Have you heard of adaptogens? Oh, yes, I have. And I feel like if Gwyneth Paltrow and Alex Jones are talking about it, that's like red flag. (laughs) Adaptogens are herbs or roots or other plant substances like mushrooms that are purported to help you manage stress or restore a healthy emotional balance or work with a stressful situation better. Again, these are very vague claims. They help me adapt? They help you to adapt. Uh, One of them is ashwagandha. I've heard of this. Many friends. Vox recently reported on the topic and said, quote, many have only been studied on cell lines or in animals. And if there are human studies, they tend to be published in tiny niche journals. A science writer who reviewed some of the studies for self noted that many were not, quote, compliant with international criteria for proper (laughs) clinical reporting, unquote. These are not substances that we can say with any reliability will help you manage a stressful situation. And if you are having enough stress that you feel you need a product to relieve it, you should not be taking a risk like that. You should be talking to a doctor. Therapist. Although that is obviously financially out of the question for a lot of people. For something like hair, skin, and nails, Dr. Peter Cohen, an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and an expert on dietary supplements, says, quote, I'm not aware of any robust data suggesting that any supplements can treat natural aging-related hair loss or nail damage or give you healthier skin. Unquote. Dang it. And there are products, there are real products that are like regulated by the FDA that can increase hair growth, that can address things like male pattern baldness over time. And they have been studied and they work, but they're not the products being sold to people. Yeah. And I feel like all of these products as a whole are basically accusing people of like, well, You're not having enough sex. You don't look young enough. You don't look skinny enough. You are not clear skinned enough, right? Here you go. (laughs) You know, and all these phrases are so tempting. And it's just a pill you take. If you could be, you know, even 1% prettier, wouldn't it be easy? And like, wouldn't it be so simple to just take a pill and have that? And it's so funny because if you were to ask somebody, is there a magic pill for anything? Everybody will tell you no. There is no but replacement here for you go. seeing a doctor, for a healthy diet, for regular exercise, for the things that we know work. There is no pill. If there were, if there were a pill for that, the person who invented it wouldn't be an influencer or running a direct, you know, network marketing MLM pyramid scheme scam company. Okay, they would be a genius scientist winning Nobel prizes. It would be on the front page of the New York Times. Just take this pill, and we're all gonna live forever. Obviously, that doesn't exist. Obviously, people don't have magical powers. But I am here to tell you, I too have been duped. We have all been duped. We need to realize how silly it is. But it is not something you need to be a silly person to have been tricked by, if you know what I mean. These are complicated topics. We all buy into it because where there's such desperate thinking and all you can think is it, it couldn't hurt, right? But it does actually hurt over time to build up all of these claims and then disprove them because you can, it's really easy to learn something and really hard to unlearn something. Most people don't end up seeing the correction in the newspaper. They read the headline. And vitamin D is something I know lots of people are still taking with a COVID-related belief. Now, according to Britannica, an essential oil is, quote, a highly volatile substance isolated by a physical process from an odiferous plant of a single botanical species. The oil bears the name of the plant from which it is derived. For example, rose oil or peppermint oil. Such oils were called essential because they were thought to represent the very essence of the odor and flavor, unquote. Essential oils are even less related to health, and there's even less evidence that you need them at all. But... People continue to use it and they justify it by saying it's aromatherapy, which is another pseudoscience. 
According to NIH.gov, quote, aromatherapy is the use of essential oils from plants, flowers, herbs, or trees as a complementary health approach. The essential oils are most often used by inhaling them or by applying a diluted form to the skin. Many essential oils are used in aromatherapy, including those from Roman chamomile, geranium, lavender, tea tree, lemon, ginger, cedarwood, and bergamot. Aromatherapy is sometimes used for insomnia, but we don't know whether it's helpful because little rigorous research has been done on this topic. Aromatherapy is sometimes incorporated into massage therapy for various conditions, such as knee pain from osteoarthritis or pain anxiety and other symptoms in people with cancer. One study of aromatherapy using two contrasting scents, lemon and lavender, in people under stress found that lemon had a positive effect on mood, but that neither scent affected stress indicators, biochemical markers of immune system changes, or pain control, unquote. There is no substantive proof for the use of essential oils as anything, but even as aromatherapy. But the guy at doTERRA told me that they would cure my son's autism. Listen, if you really like candles, you like candles, but let's not make any (laughs) magical claims about what they can do for you. Don't take my lavender candle away. From his Columbia bio, you will learn that Dr. David S. Sears, MD, SCM, PNS, is the Director of Medical Nutrition and a Professor of Medicine in the Institute of Human Nutrition at Columbia University Medical Center in New York. Dr. Sears has been a physician nutrition specialist for 25 years. So when I say he knows what he's talking about, he knows what he's talking about. And he took the time to enlighten us about the real medical science behind any of this. Unless you have an actual deficiency, supplements have no benefit other than to the supplement seller. If you're diagnosed with a deficiency in this day and age, there should be, in addition to supplements prescribed by your physician, a a medical assessment as to how you got there, as well as an analysis of your diet. Most most people eating uh, a relatively healthy diet and, and by relatively, I mean, it doesn't really have to be all that healthy, but people who are eating a relatively healthy diet don't develop deficiencies unless there's something fairly extreme in their diet or a medical condition that, for instance, precludes the absorption of certain nutrients. One example of that is that, that people who get older oftentimes don't make as much acid in their stomach and don't absorb vitamin B12. Most vegetarians probably don't need to worry that much about B12 deficiency because there are still some animal products and it doesn't take much to maintain adequacy. But vegans, on the other hand, are not getting any animal products and there really is no source uh, that's easily available of B12 coming from a non-animal source. Health scams, I guess, have been popular for centuries. And I think where it comes from is a desire to be in control of one's health outcomes so in, in terms of, you know, I want to live longer. I'd like to be healthier. So let me do things that sound like a good idea that maybe my doctor hasn't told me because, you know, doctors dot, dot, dot. So I think it's really, it sort of boils down to that people are really susceptible to the kinds of things that are promoted because they sound like a good idea or they're they're sold in a way that touches on that desire to be in control of one's health. So the first side effect you'll see is, a, is, is that your wallet will be thinner because you're spending a lot of money. These things are very expensive, and it really makes me nuts that uh, these celebrities are hawking them and have uh, more credibility than, than scientists and, and regulators. But taken in sort of responsible manner, uh, most of the vitamins are, are not going to cause too much of a problem that's more than gastrointestinal upset and things like that. At higher doses, though, I mean, it depends on the vitamin, but there are lots of toxicities. In fact, there is no vitamin that doesn't have toxicities. For instance, if you take too much beta carotene, your skin will turn yellow. That's pretty mild and it probably doesn't cause too much harm, uh, although it's a pretty ugly looking yellow color. But uh, there are others that will damage your liver and, and potentially kidneys and things. And those things are kind of hard to pick up on until they're fairly far along. So uh, they might be noticed in blood tests rather than based on symptomatology. This is 
part of the great concern with the dietary supplement industry is that these things can be really insidious and, and not and sneak up on you and that you may not be aware of them until it's too late to do anything about them. It, it, taking some vitamins or supplements might be entirely harmless to you. Might. Yeah. But there are potential negative health outcomes that could cost you a lot of money on the back end and not to mention pain and suffering. A 2015 study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that there are an estimated 23,000 emergency visits every year in the U.S. because of adverse events related to the use of dietary supplements. Many of those are cardiovascular issues uh, from weight loss, energy products, stacker pills, stuff like you see advertised. Uh, you know, every once in a while they'll get a celebrity to bloat up, then slim down, do a before and after, and and market you, you know, a, a variety of different supplements in one small pill that are all, could it be interacting with each other? There's truly no one checking. Yeah, I remember that stretch of a couple of years there where it felt like all you would hear about on from the Kardashians was about like their skinny tea that they yeah, drank. Yeah, tummy it. teas, all Ugh. of those things. And especially with something like a tea, it looks like it's, it looks like a food product. It yeah. looks like what you're about to consume is just food. But what it actually has is active ingredients that are functioning like a drug and being marketed like a drug, but are not being regulated. Yeah, like a they're drug. not subjected to actual, you know, long term testing and all the rigmarole that comes with being actually approved. And part of this is you need to speak to your doctor one on one about any supplements you're taking, even if you think that, you know, it's silly that you're taking them, you know, yeah. they don't really work or whether you're taking them for what might be an embarrassing reason, something you don't normally want to share with anyone, let alone your doctor. But you have to have complete transparency because all of these substances yeah. interact with each other, let alone real pharmaceuticals that have proven effects and side effects that they can interact with. And those can be really negative interactions. High doses of vitamin A can cause birth defects. Supplements containing B6 or B12, iodine, and whey have been linked with acne. Several skin, hair, and nail supplements are associated with an increased risk of cancer and diabetes. Ooh. Patients who don't notify their doctors that they take supplements risk those kind of supplement drug interactions, but they also risk having inaccurate laboratory reports should they need to get their blood taken, oh. should they need to have a, a substance that they produce analyzed by a lab, it's going to be impacted by those things. So if you do decide to go ahead and take these products you don't need, which cost you too much money, <laughs> please be clear with your doctor about what you're doing. Herbal and dietary supplement-induced liver injury now accounts for 20% of cases of hepatoxicity in the U.S., and these are real cases that are really resulting from people trusting what their friend in a pyramid scheme selling vitamins <laughs> tells them. Well, and it's kind of capitalizing on this idea that somehow more is more, right? Like if that green tea is good for you in its current form, well, let's build a business that then hyper, you know, condenses it so you can have just more of it. And it's like, well, that's not true, right? In life, sometimes more of something is actually a bad thing. More is not always more. You can have way too much of anything, even a good thing. You can have too much water. And unfortunately, under our current economic system, nobody is going to be encouraged to sell you less. Unless they are held accountable, there is no actor in the world who is going to choose to sell you less of anything. If anything, they're going to get you onto payment plans where you're buying it in bulk. Can I tell you like my one essential oil personal story? Because I'm really not in this whole world. So I was actually very excited when you brought up this topic. So we're basically not on speaking terms, essential oils and I, because when I was giving birth, I decided that I was going like, you know, all natural, you know, whatever. So I was taking no drugs. And I had a 43-hour labor. Oh, my God. And I am trying, at this point, I'm in the tub. And I am, I don't know, I was probably on hour 30 delirious. at this point. I was delirious. absolutely delirious. And my doula tells me, hey, put on this bracelet, which is like made of like lava rock or whatever. And I've put some peppermint essential oil in it to kind of like help with who God knows what. 
And so I'm like, whatever. Like, I have no ability to make good decisions for myself at this point. So she puts it on my hand and I'm like putting my head on my wrists, you know, on the tub. And then I start to feel a burning sensation on my face. And I was like, what's happening on my face? And it was this essential oil <laughs> burning my face and i literally ripped it off and i threw it across the room i was like what the fuck this is torture this, yeah so i don't mm -mm, nah i'm well, not on the essential oil train i think you got a pretty comprehensive first impression <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get into it first let me introduce you to rebecca watson Rebecca Watson is a journalist, a prominent skeptic, and a YouTube mainstay, and is the founder of the blog Skeptic. Rebecca took some time to enlighten us on the wide, wide world of essential oils and what they claim they can do versus reality. I see a lot of these people, you know, in addition to the essential oils being unregulated, the people selling them are very unregulated. They're just out there on Facebook and Instagram trying desperately to say anything they can to get you to buy the things that they have already tried to buy from this company in order to at least break even. And a lot of them are saying things like, oh, you can just put this essential oil in your smoothie and drink it. And Never do that. Never drink an essential oil. Do not eat essential oils. But I see it all the time. So that's one thing. Don't eat them. But even if you're not eating them, if you're just breathing them in, it can be dangerous, especially if you have pets. Just putting essential oils in your diffuser, you know, what happens with that is that the oils latch on to the steam that you then breathe in. So you are literally breathing oils into your lungs. And for adults, usually not a big deal. But for pets, for cats and dogs, uh, eucalyptus, tea tree, cinnamon, uh, citrus, peppermint, all of these things can be deadly. They can hurt or kill dogs and cats that breathe them in. And, and you know, it's not just animals. Children are much more at risk because children are much smaller. They can't uh, process as much bad stuff as adults can. So uh, there have been several studies showing that lavender and tea tree oils throw off hormones. Not a big deal for adults, but in children, it can lead to breast growth in both boys and girls as young as age eight. And that comes with a possible increased risk of cancer. The worst study that I've seen about essential oils that really shocked me was that However you use essential oils, whether you are inhaling them or rubbing them on your skin, uh, eucalyptus and camphor oils might increase your risk of seizures. There was a study that looked at 350 patients who experienced either their first seizure or a breakthrough seizure, meaning their first seizure after a long time of not having seizures. And they found that something like 16% of them were directly connected to essential oils, specifically eucalyptus and camphor. And when the researchers asked those patients to stop using essential oils, they stopped having seizures. And that should be concerning to us. So supplements... And alternative medicine have obviously been a growing trend for a long time. Yeah, everywhere. Well, more than half of U.S. adults actually take dietary supplements, and a third of U.S. adults believe in the health benefits of essential oils and aromatherapy. So that's a pretty massive that's chunk of the populace. a large amount of people believing in lavender, which, no shade to lavender, I love it. <laughs> uh, I've definitely experienced a lot of this in my life. When I was growing up, my parents loved a vitamin. They loved like any ad additive that you could purchase. Listen, shout out to Flintstones, okay? We go way back. I love those. I mean, they're basically candy. Yeah, right? I would eat some of those at a movie theater today. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Have like multicolored fluorescent The tea. orange ones only though. <laughs> Definitely the best. So it's been a huge growing trend for decades, obviously, but it's also a completely unregulated industry. 
there is basically no oversight over the claims they make or whether these products work or what they cost or what's included in them. And so at the same time that they've exploded in popularity, it's happened during a time when there's been this huge distrust in the medical community. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are overwhelmed by the amount of information being published by media sources about science or about studies. They do not have literacy in these topics. And so they're drawing outrageous conclusions. And generally, they're seeing doctors less. It's harder and harder for people to afford going to the doctor. And frankly, our health outcomes have really gone down. Like well, the, the life expectancy in the U.S. has gone down. Yes. And so people are desperate and they're trying to put their own pieces together because they either can't see doctors or the doctors they do see, they mistrust for valid reasons. I mean, yeah. if someone was tricking me about the price of things, it's hard to trust uh, anything else they have to say. Yeah, it's like, where's... Where do I go when I look at my child and she has like some weird rash? WebMD, right? Well, I'm exactly. like, that's, that's where I go first. You turn to the internet, which has been happening at the same time. This explosion of social yeah. media, explosion yeah. of fake experts, explosion of influencers, an idolization of people for wealth rather than an appreciation and respect for the things that they've learned, like their education in medicine. And media has gotten incredibly visual. And so you have a perfect storm for people to have beliefs that are not based in reality and to be exploited financially. Are you telling the internet is telling me things that aren't true <laughs> and trying to exploit me? Are you saying someone would do that? Just go on the internet and lie. <laughs> wow. So cynical. Let's hear one more time from Dr. Sears about how the media has fed into this terrifying cycle of bad information. People talk about a lot of things in diet, and the, the problem is that nobody really helps to filter all these things that people say. And often is not our... Uh, latest excitement about something nutritional is driven by an observational study where an, an association is seen between two things. The problem with this, uh, that kind of study is that one could conclude that it's the pilot's fault for the plane ride getting rough because every time they turn on the seatbelt sign, the plane ride gets rough. But we know better than that. The problem is that biology is complicated. And without doing randomized trials, the, often the case is that we end up finding out that what happens in a correlation is not a cause and effect relationship. I do wish that companies would take responsibility, but it's, it's more of a political question whether or not there's political will. I, I really also need to say that I think in part it's fault of we scientists because of the way we communicate these things as if they were the latest and greatest and uh, based on just an observational study. I've been guilty of this, talking about an observation uh, as something that's exciting, but we don't teach the public that we often don't know whether or not it's really causal. When we lose credibility, then when we actually find something out that's potentially healthy or when somebody tries to sell their latest and greatest snake oil, and we want to try and counter it, if we don't have the credibility to do so, people's health could be harmed. Ugh. Yeah, and I feel like I see this when I just go to the store. Like, I remember as a kid going to the store, and, you know, my mom would go to get the Flintstones, and it's like a small section, you know, like the vitamins and stuff that you would take. And now I go into Walgreens and I feel like two entire aisles are just like CoQ10, um, the skinny tea, this ginseng, that kind of ginseng, 12 types of vitamin B. I mean, it really is, I think, kind of out of control. How much do you think people are spending on this? Oh my God, I have no idea. In 2019, people were spending about $353 billion, and that number is now approaching half a trillion dollars oh. on stuff we don't need. And the global essential oils market is projected to increase in the next decade, even though we have more and more proof that these are not necessary products, but also actively harming the people using them. Mm. And when healthcare costs are already going up, it's not a pretty picture. 
And it's gotten less pretty since that 1994 mm. act was passed. So, for example, in the early 90s, there was like 4,000 supplements on the market. Yeah. A large market, but certainly not something you That's... can control. Now we have up to 80,000, but truly well, no idea. No one knows because there's no like centralized mechanism that people have to pass through, apparently. Yeah. I mean, we can say it, th there there might be 80,000, <laughs> but because we have no, literally nobody looking at or tracking any of this... You might think you are talking to a doctor. That's uh -huh. another part of this. The whole supplement market has a whole wing called pharmaceutical grade or medical grade. Yeah. I mean, that sounds really legit when I hear that. Well, as the Washington Post recently reported, similar to the term natural, those are labels that don't actually have any FDA regulation oh, fantastic. and uh, specific requirements. A medical or pharmaceutical grade labeled vitamin may be functionally no different than another vitamin that isn't given those labels and sits right next to it on the shelf, but it will be marked up. In the descriptions of these kinds of things, there's so much couching that's like, this may promote, this may help, right? It doesn't like tell you this cures. It's just like, this can do, this <laughs> might do. <laughs> Yeah, they're sneaky as heck. That is why we need to be as skeptical as possible of all of these kinds of claims. To that end, let's hear one more time from Rebecca Watson, who, despite the fact that she knows none of these alternatives are real, does want to validate your fears about Big Pharma, but not for the reasons you might think. Big Pharma is real. Um, the pharmaceutical lobby in the United States is horrific. And uh, I hate them. But I have actually been, you know, in in my early 20s, I was a, an activist fighting against the pharmaceutical companies lobbyists. Even today, as much as I dislike the snake oil salesman, I also really hate what the pharmaceutical industry has done to our medical establishment. And the problem is that, you know, big pharma not only owns the the real medicine, but they've seen how much money there is to be made in the alternatives. And so they also own all of those hippie organic brands that you see selling homeopathy and vitamins and things like that. Those are owned by the same big pharma companies that you are rebelling against. So uh, not only are you continuing to give big pharma your money, but now you're also getting a sham treatment at best. At best, you're getting something that does nothing. And at worst, you're getting something that, you know, has unintended side effects. So where do you turn? Um, <laughs> honestly, in the U.S., all I can do is say that you you have to find a doctor. And to do that, you have to find good health insurance. And it's just so overwhelming. Snake oil salesmen use single studies and tell you that this means that this is going to work for you. Uh, a green flag to me is someone who says, look, the preponderance of evidence suggests this and not that. But don't take my word for it. You know, so if somebody is selling something, always be skeptical of that. And if they're just relying on a single study, if they are linking out to studies that don't actually relate back to their product, be very skeptical. With my mom, I try to engage in harm reduction. So she for instance, told me she was going to see a chiropractor at one point. We both have bad backs. And I wasn't going to stop her from seeing a chiropractor. But I, I did tell her, like, look, chiropractic can be just as good as physical therapy. But just know that, like, if he ever goes anywhere near your neck, <laughs> say no. <laughs> if he ever tries to uh, cure any disease other than bad back, don't, you know, walk away. And I feel like that hit home for her. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case anybody else is dealing with the same thing. It's okay, I think, to have friends and family who engage in bullshit. <laughs> My the way I look at it is can they can they afford it financially and also in terms of their health? You know, 
if they are going bankrupt on something, that's not good. If they are foregoing real medicine in favor of something else, that's not good. But I'm not going to yell at my mom for taking a multivitamin every day. Hey guys, it's Chelsea here, and I'm just popping in to let you know about the Society at TFD, our exclusive members-only community available to join here on our YouTube channel, as well as on Patreon. If you want to support TFD and the special projects we work on, like fan-favorite podcasts Too Good to Be True, we'd love for you to join. Giving to TFD directly is the best way to ensure that we can keep making the content you most want from us. The Society is available both on YouTube and Patreon, and before you ask, the membership offerings are very similar on both platforms, so you only need to join one. Some people prefer YouTube, so join us there. Prefer Patreon? Join us there. And since you guys have been asking for clarification, here's a breakdown of what you guys get for each tier on each platform. On YouTube, our membership tiers are $2.99 and $4.99. For $2.99, you get loyalty badges and Mon emojis on YouTube, 40% off TFD digital events, monthly office hours with Chelsea, access to our Discord community, access to our monthly book club, and access to our questions answered by me or guests on the Financial Confessions. For $4.99, you get everything from the $2.99 tier, plus exclusive ad-free videos each month where you can catch me rant about Dave Ramsey, TikTok face, girl bossing, goop, and so much more, entire backlog of ad-free bonus videos, 50% off TFD live digital events on everything from $12 workshops to $199 courses, priority access to get your questions answered by me or guests on the Financial Confessions. And over on Patreon, our tiers are $7 and $12. For $7 a month, you get exclusive ad-free videos each month, our entire backlog of ad-free bonus videos, 50% off TFD live digital events on everything from $12 workshops to $199 courses, monthly office hours with Chelsea, access to our Discord community, access to our book club, automatic enrollment in exclusive Patreon-only newsletters, priority voting on the monthly book club selection, and priority access to get your questions answered by me or guests on the Financial Confessions. For $12, you get everything from the $7 level, plus our weekly Ask TFD Anything newsletter, where you get your personal questions answered by the TFD team. No topic is too small or too big to ask. The Society has something for everyone, so click the link in the description of this episode to join us on your preferred platform. When there is that much money on the line and you can get this much control over people and how they live their lives, that is going to become a political issue and a lever being pulled by specific people. For example, there was a political goal to create a lot of misinformation around COVID yeah. and to politicize basic the basic information that we did have, uh, the way that all information gets politicized. But to a degree that we were platforming as a country a lot of people who were trying to sell stuff rather than having anything to contribute to the conversation. So a lot of the media we saw was people saying, you know, debunked medications work, debunked supplements work, and here's how you can buy it from me, or here's how you can buy things to support these quote-unquote causes. And it has had a real measurable effect in what people think. In April of 2020, 31% of Republicans said they had a great deal of confidence in medical scientists. Wow. That's a low number. Today, just 15% of Republicans <gasps> have confidence in medical science. That is enormous. It, I cannot believe it's that. It's a big market. If you have a product to push, that's a huge market to push it to. And it's only getting larger. Well, I think that capitalizes on a subset of people who really get off on this phrase of like what they don't want you to know, right? It's like yeah. that there's a underlying conspiracy of people in the know keeping really amazing things from us that could help us age backwards, look prettier, have more sex. But this one little company was fighting the good fight and now serves it to you in this beautifully packaged bottle. <laughs> Consumer product. Yeah. God, God. In another life, I could have been so rich. So there's tons of money being thrown around and no political will. And politicians themselves are spreading some of these bad ideas, you know, to manipulate their base or to make the other side look like they're lying or whatever bullshit serves their immediate ends. And politicians are not the only influencers involved in this. They're just, you know, the most egregious group that we're not tracking. There are influencers who aren't being tracked by anybody. I mean, they can, you can barely get influencers to label things as an ad. 
especially the smaller ones who you might trust more because they seem more like someone you know. Exactly. Aren't labeling any of this. Yeah, like to be honest, if I'm watching Kourtney Kardashian talk about something, it's because my life is so far removed from hers, it's like whatever. You know, you know to take it with a grain of salt. But if I see somebody with like 10,000 followers that looks more like me and is like in my age range, I'm just more likely to take on what they're saying than be than scrutinizing it. And in addition to the health claims that they can make with literally no approval, they can make other claims about themselves. So for example, a lot of makeup product reviews, a lot of supplement product reviews, a lot of things that have very visual effects. People will say my honest review of or my real opinions about and then stick a, an affiliate link in there. Mm-hmm. And you so have, honest. <laughs> yeah, so honest. And you have no way of knowing why, why they came to that honest opinion because maybe you do like the product, but I think you like the product because it is you know, enriching you. For more about these scummy social media tactics, we spoke with Amanda the Jedi. Amanda is a prominent commentary YouTuber with over half a million followers who has extensively covered social media scammers in both the worlds of essential oils and pyramid schemes. And of course, the essential oil pyramid schemes. I think in a lot of these situations, it's not just like the desire to sell the product or be your own boss. I think a lot of people see that influencer lifestyle and that's what they're coveting. They don't care necessarily care what the product is. That's why you see a lot of them jumping around from different thing to different thing. Oftentimes they'll jump from one MLM that counters the new one and they'll start like shitting on the old one to promote the new one. But uh, people just want these lifestyles and don't realize that so much of it is fake. Very few of those salespeople or any of those uplines are actually making that money. And it's very fake. And I know that's the same in like the regular influencer industry that a lot of people just fake it, fake it till they make it. A lot of them are in debt. They're buying fake things. But I do think that a lot of these people fed into this whole idea of like being your own boss, being an influencer, running your own life, being the thing that people look up to. I think that's what people want a lot. They want to be the life. They want to have the life that other people look to and say, I wish that was me. So instead of some of these uh, businesses or lies being trapped in individual communities and just kind of spinning around one same mom group and, you know, a lot of guys get pulled into this stuff, too, um, the whole social media network makes it so much easier to both spread the information, get more people to spread the more the, the misinformation and just build this like network of people who are just spreading lies, whether knowingly or unknowingly. You can find Amanda the Jedi at youtube.com slash at Amanda the Jedi. So obviously you can market things with fear, but you can also market things with hope. And you can give people, you know, metrics they can judge themselves by that have no cap in their mind. So like, for example, beauty. You can always be more beautiful. Why not add more and more to the things making you quote unquote beautiful? You can always be skinnier. Your skin can always be clearer. And if you are someone who can speak with authority about something like beauty that, you know, only came to you because you're naturally beautiful, say you're (laughs) Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, God. You already have the resources to look your best at all times. You can then market to people. Here's what I take. I take this. She has one product called High School Jeans. Doesn't say it's going to make you younger with clinical proof, but it certainly implies it. Then they can charge you like $75 a month or $90 for a single pop every month for years. And you'll believe that if Gwyneth Paltrow takes it and she has access to all the best things in the world, why would she lie about it? And so you're living basically her lifestyle. And that kind of marketing comes from a completely different psychological angle as the fear-based marketing. Mm -hmm. So you can double your market right there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, high school genes. As if human bodies changing is a bad thing. Yes, that's a great point. Aging is not necessarily this horrible, awful, disgraceful thing. I think of aging as a privilege. I, I think of it as as an accumulation, an abundance. Look at all this time I've had. You, I Be suspicious of anybody who's trying to make you feel uncomfortable or like you need something. In order to sell a product, these people stoke the fires of fat phobia, of ageism, of racism, of misogyny. They're they're preying on the worst instincts of humanity, marketing those things as being real problems, and then sitting back and hoping that you believe they have the solution. Or if you're already in a fear-based mindset when you come to them, offering you the hope that 
taking, you know, a, a specific nutrient that your body uses for a specific purpose in massive amounts is somehow going to reverse all of the effects of time. I mean, it's just silly. So Gwyneth Paltrow is one of a suite of celebrities who are making a ton of money off this market. On the other end of the spectrum, you have people like Alex Jones of InfoWars, mm -hmm. who appeals to a very different demographic. Although, given the price point of some of these products and both of those people's core audience, I imagine there's a lot more crossover in households than anyone in either camp would have you believe. But anyway... He has raked in $165 million over just three years of selling supplements and, like, end-of-the-world prep gear. Oh, but he has no money to pay the uh, Sandy Hook family. <laughs> <Yeah>. Got it. <laughs> There's huge, huge margins on supplements, too. There's, you know, other influencers are, are have their toes in the water. You've got Tati Westbrook, who's a oh, beauty yes. blogger, who I actually used to love in her early days. But she has come out with a beauty vitamin brand. Uh, oh, boy. It was believed that one of the vitamins in her skin, hair, hair nail supplements was interfering with people's birth control. And it needs to be oh, pulled from no. the market and reformulated. I actually came into possession of those no. vitamins and took them a few times. <laughs> and I have to say... Uh, they were pink, and I can't think of anything else they did for me. <laughs> uh, you've also got Kourtney Kardashian, one of the, you know, elite Kardashians who's been pushing a gummy supplement called Lemmy since September 2022. Can we call them gummy bears? Like, why can't we just eat her Haribo in peace? I don't, I don't know if I'm blowing anyone's mind here, but I think there have been other factors that have contributed to Kourtney Kardashian's appearance hmm. than a line of gummy bears she introduced last fall. That's yeah, kind of like, just like, Pretty people are like, oh, I'm pretty, and how can I sell something? Yeah, any, any if I have any aspiration at all, I can put it on this product and sell it to you and essentially make any claims I want. And there are influencers who have squared their entire brands on stuff like this. So, for example, do you know of Amanda Chantal Bacon? Because if you don't, it is important context that she's an elite-level wellness influencer, and she also is the owner of a brand called Moon Juice, which is a brand of supplements and they say dusts, juices, uh, but these are all supplements with various uh, compounds in them and they make lots of crazy claims. Katie Warren wrote for Insider about Moon Juice, quote, Moon Juice advertises itself as a virtuous wellness company whose products, which include $38 jars of sex dust and $30 bags of activated cashews, <laughs> are of the highest quality and sourced sustainably and transparently. Its quote-unquote trained alchemists can blend you a smoothie spiked with brain dust or any other dust of your choosing at one of its two Los Angeles stores. When the company expanded into the beauty sphere in 2018, products like its Cosmic Cream Moisturizer and Acid Potion Exfoliator were touted as, quote, magic potions and, quote, clean alternatives to mainstream beauty brands. In January, Moon Juice secured $7 million in Series C funding from True Beauty Ventures, a firm that invests in beauty startups. At the helm of Moon Juice is its founder, Amanda Chantal Bacon, who starts her day with a 23-minute breath set, has an at-home infrared sauna, and is second only to Goop's Gwyneth Paltrow in the world of wealthy white wellness goddesses. But some former employees say Moon Juice's practices have long been in contrast with its do-good ethos, leaving staffers struggling with what they see as blatant hypocrisy. They say Moon Juice tried to present its shop employees, referred to as trained alchemists, as having some sort of expertise about supplements, despite inadequate training and near-minimum wage pay. Some questioned Moon Juice's lack of transparency about the sourcing of its ingredients, and despite Moon Juice's proclamations of inclusivity, some former employees say they were subject to racist comments from colleagues that management failed to address, unquote. Sounds a little unwell to me. I guess it's silly to ask what anybody knows about brain dust, but what do you know about brain dust? Oh, do I? So shout out. I did not know about her until I heard about her on one of my favorite podcasts, Maintenance Phase. Highly recommend. They did a whole deep dive. And my favorite thing was getting to read the article about what she eats in a day. Would you like a carefully curated um, dramatic reading. Oh, please. Oh, I'm on it. Okay. This is just a small part of this. I just want to say, because this goes on and on. 
At 9.30 a.m., I drink 16 ounces of unsweetened, strong green juice, which is my alkalizer, hydrator, energizer, source of protein and calcium, and overall mood balancer. It's also my easy, and this is in quotes, lazy and delicious skin regime. I also take three tablespoons of bee pollen. I love Moon Juice's soft and chewy bee pollen. It's creamy, candy-like treat that gives me my daily B vitamin blast and also helps feed my skin and aids hormone production. I'm sorry, do I want a B vitamin blast? Like, <laughs> it's just so true. Are these gushers or? <laughs> gushers. But this was the line that had so many people kind of up in arms. She said, I'll also grab a handful of activated cashews. I try to get these in every day for their brain chemistry magic. I chase this with a shot of pressed turmeric root in a freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. Chemistry magic. I mean, it is magic, right? Essentially. And I'm like, where are these lazy cashews? Where are they hanging? (laughs) (laughs) How do I motivate my cashews? I need cashews that go to the gym. Maybe they just need some sex dust. Oh, we should talk about the sex dust. Oh, yes. I know about this. (laughs) (laughs) They have a product which they say will target your stress and balance your hormones, give you an increased libido, more creative energy, better relaxation, sleep, brain health, more regularity. And who wouldn't pay for a product that could give you all of those things in our current lifestyles, our current world? I mean, I'd pay top dollar, wouldn't you? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I would. Please tell me I can age backwards. Please tell me that all the effects of living in like a hyper-capitalist society can be countered by this thing that I can purchase. There's a ton of money to be made. And the truth is the people making that money know that they're lying. These are not people who have just lucked into good health and they're experiencing the placebo effect and evangelizing it to others. At a certain point, when you are working at this full time and making that much money, we have to accept that you have had every opportunity to find out that this is a scam. For more on this, let's hear one more time from Rebecca Watson. There's a there's a book that I believe is long out of print called The, um, the Psychic Mafia. It's about a a guy who becomes a psychic basically and makes loads of money. And then he left and wrote this tell all about how psychics trick people out of their money. And he talks at length about, I forget the exact term, but it's something like open eyed and shut eyed. When a psychic starts out, they usually really believe they have psychic powers. Um, and that's known as, uh, you know, shut eyed. and. Uh, You can go your entire life believing you have psychic powers um, and you can be like one of those aunties that gives out advice and helps friends and family by reading their tarot cards. But as soon as you decide that it's your career, he points out that it becomes impossible to keep your eyes shut anymore because the more you work, the more you do it, the more you realize that you are taking advantage of these people and you just have to either accept that or leave the business. And I think it's the exact same way with MLMs. I think everybody who gets in at the beginning fervently believes in both the product and in the hope of making money. Uh, The data be damned, they're going to do it. They're going to hustle harder. And then you have to see the scam at that point. You know, once you hit a certain level, you see the scam and accept the fact that every new person you are recruiting is going to lose money and you are going to make money off of them. Like at that point, I feel like it's it's sociopath or GTFO, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really genuinely feel for the people at the the bottom level of the pyramid because they are usually, you know, desperate or, you know, they're looking for some kind of path in life that isn't tied to our horrible capitalistic system. You know, they're like, oh, I'm just going to sell 
lipstick to friends and family and I'm going to pay my mortgage through it. You know, they, they're genuinely full of hope for both the product they're selling and for this like career path that they're on. And either they're going to lose all their money and wise up and leave, or they're going to find success at conning people and they're going to become the con artist. It, those are your two paths. To hear more from Rebecca Watson, head over to youtube.com slash at Rebecca Watson Skeptic. That's Rebecca Watson, S-K-E-P-C-H-I-C-K. I guarantee she's a much better follow than Amanda Chantal Bacon and her weird buckets of dust or whatever it is that she's serving customers. <laughs> And she doesn't even have the grace to give us something that, like, tastes good, like a gummy bear. <laughs> Apparently, these things are just vile. And you've got trends that have come out of this. Like, have you heard of the blood cleanse? What is that? So, <laughs> it's it's believed by, their, by, the, by the community around it that it's a regimen of things you ingest in order to get toxins out of your bloodstream. Uh. So that you can strengthen your immune system or improve your skin health or whatever. But th this usually includes not just eating and drinking and exercising in a certain routine, but there's always some other thing you need to buy. So some of the members of this blood cleanse community are claiming that dandelion supplement can stimulate your liver to, quote, remove toxins from the body or that the burdock root eliminates toxins from your body in general. Again, these are really vague terms. Toxins eliminate. Yeah. What, 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 what does, what that, does mean? that mean? A, a you you can't show someone a toxin under a microscope. You could be referring to lots of different things. Uh, we have a quote from Jonathan A. Dramoff, MD, a hepatologist and professor of medicine at the Yale School of Medicine, said, quote, the common use of the word detox is much like the word literally. The common <laughs> use and the expert use are almost opposites. Wow, unquote. I love that. And blood cleanse is another example. You want to remove toxins from my bloodstream. Uh, but not from other places. Yeah. Just specifically the blood. Just my blood, please. It's a story that sounds aesthetically right. But if you think about it for more than a few minutes, and luckily social media doesn't give you a point. No, minutes. it doesn't. Oh, another trend on there, chlorophyll. That's, you know, that's existed for a while. This idea that chlorophyll is is in and of itself a huge health, be has huge health benefits. Well, hello, green juice. A hundred percent. The idea of juice cleanses ties right in with chlorophyll being like one of the secret things in it. Because when you remove the fiber and it's mostly sugar that you're having, your juice cleanse isn't going to well, have anything know, to even stack up. It's kind of funny because when you think about, well, how do plants make food? I mean, the idea of chlorophyll is it's kind of magic. It just takes things out of the air and then it just produces something wonderful that we all need. But that's for freaking plants, and you not can for get humans. It from a salad. <laughs> yeah, you do not need not to get salad. like highly concentrated. If you really believe chlorophyll is somehow going to make you be able to turn sunlight into energy, which it's <laughs> not. But if that's what you want to believe, why would you get it from the most expensive, dangerous, unregulated source possible? Because but, someone told me on TikTok that I had to. Exactly. In 2021, there was a viral explosion about chlorophyll and people making tons of claims. And it was this huge trend. And I guarantee that the debunking wasn't as trendy and funny and entertaining mm -hmm. and didn't reach as many people as the initial claims. I mean, it can make things that would otherwise sound unpleasant sound more popular because the, the, the branding is sticky or entertaining or it tells you a story really quickly. So some of the terms that fall under that umbrella would be like an internal shower. <laughs> You know, that doesn't sound great, but no. certainly you can imagine what they're pitching you. Or like yeah. a colon cleanse. Colons make you think of unpleasant things, but a cleanse of something unpleasant. Yeah, makes it shiny and necessary. new. Yeah, it's like a Disney princess is like hard at work with all of her little animal friends. And honestly, because the claims are so vague, topics like your gut are related to so many different things in your body that it can be a moving target of what it even is supposed to be doing for you. And... You know, in an environment where influencers are able to push so many products, I, I, they advertise pharmaceuticals like the, because it works. And if an influencer is saying to you, I've had these results, look at the lifestyle I'm living, you're going to have a very different reaction to that information than a doctor in a, in a, in a cold environment, in yeah. a lab coat, in an office somewhere telling you, like, we don't have any proof that this works. Yeah, I need a girl in like a cute haircut and outfit to tell me. 
that might be what you need. But the insidious thing about social media is that there is always someone who is the kind of person you would listen to who's willing to take money to say a lie. So if you put enough stuff in a bottle, no matter what hope or fear people have, there will be someone somewhere claiming one of those substances will help them with it. And when those promises don't end up working eventually, it only drives the same misinformation and distrust that people already had in the medical community, right? Because they're looking at this as a medical product that didn't work for them rather than looking at it as what it is, which is a scam to keep you from going to get actual medical help. So how are regulators trying to tackle this? Are they even? Is there anything being done about this? So the U.S. Prevention Services Task Force published a new recommendation last summer that current evidence available is, quote, insufficient to determine the benefits and harms of taking most vitamin, mineral, and multivitamin supplements to prevent heart disease, stroke, and cancer, which is a pretty bold statement. I mean, it it, it gets the ball rolling on yeah. the fact that there is no efficacy to a lot of this. But there have been several attempts over the years to pass legislation that could create some kind of regulation over the industry, such as the Dietary Supplement Listing Act of 2022, but they have all failed due to lobbying. Uh. So how can we protect ourselves if the government is not properly doing it for us? You need to talk to your doctor. If you have a GP, you need to talk to them about any supplements that you're taking. If you end up in the emergency room, you need to be very clear if you are taking supplements Mm. or essential oils. And you need to make sure that your prescriptions are compatible with something like that if you are going to go ahead and take it anyway. Even though I'm telling you now, don't take it unless your doctor tells you themselves. Yeah, no, actually, I hadn't thought about that. I mean, I'm on prescription medication for my anxiety, and I didn't even think to ask my GP about like, hey, I'm taking these fish oils. Is there something in there that could be like, you know, counteracting the effects? I didn't think about it. And if your doctor does give you a test and make that recommendation, if they say you need to supplement because Mm. for some reason your specific case requires it, you want to look for a United States Pharmacopoeial Convention verified mark, which is a mark that is awarded to manufacturers who went through a stringent application process. The National Library of Medicine has done studies and reviews that have shown that there are liver injuries, cases in which you can implicate not just people taking supplements they weren't supposed to be taking, but mislabeled supplements that weren't even what they thought they were taking. Oh, dear. Is it like rat poop? And what's in these (laughs) things? Who knows? If you are in the market for something like an essential oil for aromatherapy or some of their more subjective uses, the Washington Post says, quote, one way to separate real oils from synthetics is price. Essential oils are difficult and expensive to produce and often Mm -hmm. require large amounts of the plants. So basically, I think it comes down to in this particular space, trust nothing, (laughs) verify everything. And even just kind of from a personal standpoint, I think it's worth it to dig deeper into why I want something or why I feel like something needs to be fixed. Like if I'm focused on just being happy with who I am in my body and kind of content with my face as it is at 36 years old, right? Like If I'm believing something is deficient in me, has a doctor told me that it's deficient or is it social media telling me I'm deficient? I think at its heart, this week's topic is a deceptively dark one. It is taking our fear of sickness or unease or or loss, our fear over our mortality and offering you control over the issue. And I know this is deep. I know this is dark. I We're supposed to be talking about vitamins. But I do want people to realize that you do not have total control over that. Nobody does. And the levers of control that you do have, you know. It's exercise. It's what you eat. It's how you spend your life. It's how healthy you are. It's the people you, you have around you and genetics. It's environmental factors, like systems. It is not what like like magic pill you take there is no magic pill and and that's the hard truth there is no magic pill 
And if you do feel like you're having really negative health outcomes, like you feel exhausted all the time, or you don't feel mental clarity, or you you are having like trouble controlling your weight, and that's something you want to pursue, you talk to your doctor about it. Talk to a specialist yeah. about it. Don't talk to the guy at GNC. Don't talk to your friend who is financially motivated. Don't trust influencers to know better than the medical establishment. If they did, they would have degrees. They would be charging a lot yeah. more money than what they're charging for their opinion. And, you know, uh, any claim that a product makes that sounds too good to be true, as we usually tell you, it is. Thank you, Ryan, for another fabulous topic. We will see you next time. I'm going home to throw out a bunch of multivitamins I bought years ago, and I will see you. Well, I'm time. keeping my fish oil, okay? <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Okay, wait. Actually, you know what? This is Ryan in the future. I decided to record for you the sound of me throwing out my vitamins. So enjoy that peppered over our usual outro. All my ASMR girlies, time to rise up. <laughs> Bye, guys. Well, that's the show for the week. You can find Too Good to Be True wherever podcasts are available. And while you're there, we'd love for you to rate the show and leave us a review. I've been Ryan Houlihan, and you can find me on all social media at Ryan Houlihan or on my personal YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Ryho. That's at R-Y-H-O. I've been Julia Lorenz Olson. You can find me on YouTube at my PBS show, Two Cents. And every once in a while, I'll look at Instagram. My handle is at yay, it's Julia. That's all of them. Bye.